Hi Stitchers, it's the Crafty Curator, also known as Leticia. Just thought I'd do a quick video, um, show you a little bit of my haul and um, my whips, which are not as um, whipped as I would like them to be, but a few of you know that I am currently taking um, some classes right now. I'm working on my master's degree, so that's taken up a bit of my time. But I've still made time for stitching, just not as much as I would have liked um, to do in the past few weeks. But still, I have stuff to share. Um, I've received a few packages that I have been eagerly, eagerly awaiting, and one of them, I actually did what I said I was going to do. I said I was going to wait to open it with you guys, um, and I have received this package, and I was so excited to receive this package. Um, I actually clapped when my husband brought it to me. I clapped, out, you know, and cheered a little bit. I was very excited. But anyway, I have opened it just to save you guys the distress of hearing all the crinkling of the envelopes and the plastic, but I'm going to unravel it with you. Um, I haven't gone any further than taking it out of the plastic, surprisingly. Um, but I want to show you a few things that I've been working on. Um, but first, I'm going to start with um, a haul. I found um, a pattern recently, and well, actually it was three of them on Etsy. There were three patterns, they were $3 each, but I just thought they were so different. Um, and you know, they have a little bit of that ethnic flair to them that I love so much. So I just wanted to share with you um, what I found. The first pattern um, is from UA Homemade Studio. It's a $3 pattern um, coming from the Ukraine and it's called Red Indian, and it's categorized as, as an ethnic ornament. That's what it's called. Um, but this is the very first one. If we can get that glare off. You can't really, you can see the, the little Indian, wait a minute, public service announcement. Do not look at my nails. Let me take this down so you can understand because you're going to, you're going to see my nails and, and they're atrocious. And let me explain why. Um, I had some gel nail polish on and I decided that rather than going back to the salon and having it taken off properly, I decided I was going to do it myself. And it didn't work out so well. So when you see my nails, it looks like, um, yeah, it, it just looks like I was like digging in charcoal or something. My nails are not dirty. They're just... It's residue. There is gel nail polish stuck on my nails. There's um, a touch of glitter nail polish that's stuck on my nails. I just, you know, I look like a three-year-old, you know, when they get into the nail polish. So that's my public service public service announcement. Um, so please don't look at them. But now that, of course, that I said that, I, I know you will. So you know, enjoy. Anyway, here we go with the nails. This is my um, red Indian. So it's on a black background. You can't really see it because of the glare, but the border here is uh, red and yellow and orange and tan. There's mm, yeah, four colors of DMC involved in this. Um, the Indian himself, he is um, this tan color. Where is, I'm on my iPad, so I'm all thrown off. Where's the, that's right here. <laughs> this is the Indian. He is, um, yeah, maybe. This is what, 976? Remember 976 numbers? Anyway, I don't know why I said that. But anyway, this is a 976 DMC. This is the color of the Indian. It's like a, uh, a goldish, tannish color. And then the background has the red, yellow, and gold pattern. You can, oh, that's not bad actually, right there. Bam. That's the red Indian. And I'll show you the other colors. Um, I want to show you the other two patterns while I have a, uh, a handle on the glare. This one is called Abstract Tree. And again, it's an ethnic ornament. And I don't, I don't, it's an abstract tree with, you know, a funky little border. And then the third one is called, I'm back to the Red Indian. It's called the Eagle Shaman. I kind of like that. It's doing like some little dance or something. 
But anyway, they're fairly small. Um, stitched on 14 count, which I'm not stitched. I keep looking over here because I'm used to my camera being up here, but I've, the camera's over here. But anyway, so forgive me if I'm looking in the wrong space. Um, but anyway, it's 120 inches by 120 inches. And on 14 count Eta, it's going to be eight and a half by eight and a half. And I'm doing it on something. It's not 14 count Eta. I don't even know what I have here. I think it's, is it 18 or 25? I don't know what I purchased. I don't know what I purchased. But anyway, I have three pieces of black fabric. But it feels like Joblin. Maybe, it's, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's 30, it's 32 count, I think. I think it's 32 count. Um, I have no idea. But I know it's 9 by 13. No, that's bigger than that. I, I simply don't know what I've purchased, but it's black and it's pretty and I have three pieces of it. And I'm going to stitch my three um, ethnic ornaments on that. And these are the colors. I just showed you the 976, which is like the tanny goldish kind of color. This is DMC 817. Oh, there's my camera. DMC 817 and it's um, a dark, man now. It's like a dark Christmassy red. Um, then 741, which is a nice orange color. And then a bright sunshiny yellow, 307. Mm -hmm. So I stayed true to the pattern uh, with the colors, but I just thought they were funky and different. And there's my little bunch of DMC, rare and to go, and my unknown count of black fabric so I'm going to stitch those up but those were three dollars a piece and I'll put the links um, down below so you can all join in on the fun if you choose to um, but that's my first um, little share the second share I want to share I want to the second share I want to share with you I'm going with it um, I've shared some of I'm gonna stop saying share now but um, <laughs> I've shared some pictures with you on um, Instagram of this. And this is the Book of Ink Circles pattern. I found it in one of my Facebook groups. One of um, the group members was stitching it and then I saw this magical word beneath the pattern. It's free, it's free. So I was all over it. Um, it was, well, it's called Book of Ink Circles and it's a pretty big pattern, um, geometrical design. And I've changed the colors completely because I wanted to use what was in my stash. Um, I decided to go with this in the midst of my Mirabilia fail, which I'm gonna explain a little later if you're on Instagram and you follow me, you already know what happened, but I'll explain it and share it with the world or the world of folks too. But anyway, I found this pattern because I needed something to make me feel better because I was so upset about my Mirabilia. And I was so happy that it was free, but I took some of the colors that I already had in my stash and I just got it started. Um, and I haven't touched it since I solved my memorabilia part, pat, problem, but this is where I ended. It doesn't look like much right now, but it's such an easy stitch and it just, you know, one of those stitches where you just kind of stay in the lines and get lost in and watch a little TV shows and it's comforting and therapeutic. But the pattern is so funky and I hate that I don't have this ready, but maybe, maybe very quickly I can pull this up for you. But it's called, again, Book of Ink Circles. It's free on Ink Circles um, website. Can I find it? I can. This is the pattern. So it's really funky. It's got all these little intricate designs. Um, I did not do these colors. I chose um, dark teals and 
dark rusts and a multicolor. And instead of doing black for the outlines, I chose to do dark brown, 3371. Um, so there's, I just love the patterns. I just love the geometric patterns and it's so different. These little things right here, these little kitty cats, look at that nail. Just look at that nail, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. These little kitty cats right here, I took them off. I'm still doing the little where it's purple and blue um, and where it comes to a point. I'm still doing that. The purple is actually in um, Petite Treasure Braid, um, Petite Treasure Braid in gold. Give it a little sparkle, but I'm not doing the kitty cats because I don't know what they're about. I don't even know if they're kitty cats, but you know, they got to go. Oh, look at that www.inkcircles.com that's where you go to get that it's called book book of ink circles but they refer to it as boink which i find humorous because i have that weird sense of humor but it's called boink um which is just a funny word but anyway that's the pattern you can choose whatever colors you wish as i did um and join in on the fun i haven't gotten very far but it's a fun stitch i just put it down to work on school and then when I solved my whole Mirabilia debacle, um, I've been working on her a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So speaking of Mirabilia, so let me tell you about the Mirabilia incident. I decided that I was going to be um, like the cool kids and do one over one, excuse me, one over one for her skin. Let me tell you, that's not for everybody. And I think anybody that's ever stitched one over one on 32 count fabric will tell you that is a challenge. But the problem that I had is I couldn't make up my mind that indecisive gene kicked in. And at first I was doing the regular two over, yeah, two strands over two on 32 count um, as dictated in the pattern. And I was happily stitching away. Um, but then I got, caught up in all the beauty of Instagram pictures and I decided I too wanted to do one over one um, and it didn't work it didn't work for me so I let me backtrack I took out everything that I did with the skin that was two over one I was almost finished all of her skin frogged all of that took that out and decided to go back and do one over one so then I decided that I didn't like how the one over one was looking because I was making number one, I made so many mistakes. So I had to frog, I don't know how long it took me just to do like five lines. It, the frogging on one over one, I think they call it petite point. It's not a, it's not a party. It's not a party, it's not a pleasure. Um, so I took all of that out and then I decided I was going to do the two over two again. I didn't get very far with that when I came up with this idea. I can do two over one in a 10 stitch. Well, I frogged out the two over two that I started for the second time and decided to go through and do the two over one in a 10 stitch. And when I thought about it, I said I'm making more work for myself because two over one in a 10 stitch is really just the long version of two over two because I'm doing the same thing. It's still the same two strands of thread and it kind of defeated the purpose. Um, and then it was getting bulky on the back because it was getting this embroidery feel to it. And when I took a step back and looked, I was, I was just defeating the whole purpose because the skin was looking more dense than the dress. And it's really supposed to give the impression that the one over one that is, is supposed to give the impression that the skin is painted and delicate and beautiful and she's actually wearing the dress because there's a three-dimensional feel to it because there's a different um, thickness from the thread. And I, I just, I was making a mess. So I decided, again, I was gonna frog that. Um, but again, it was very difficult. Even though it was two over one, I think it might've even been more difficult to frog that. Um, but at that point, my fabric started looking ratty and I was so unhappy. I was just, it became work. And everything that we love about cross-stitching just went out the window. It wasn't therapeutic. It wasn't relaxing. It wasn't fun. So I put my mirror down. I put her down, and that's when I picked up Boink. Um, I put her down. I put her in timeout, you know, and I missed her, and she missed me. So we decided we were going to get back together. 
um, with a fresh start on new fabric. Well, not new fabric, I had the fabric. Um, but we were just gonna start over, and that's what we did. Um, and I'm very happy with her now. She looks beautiful, she has hair, she has all her skin done. I never have to do the skin again. I never have to do the skin again. And I'm very happy about that. But anyway, um, I started her over and her skin is done, her hair is done. And when I was stitching her, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that when I saw the, I'm doing at the mat, I don't know if I said that. When I saw the pattern for at the mat, I just loved her. And I decided that she reminded me of Josephine Baker. So I was going to um, convert, her, do a convert, uh, DMC conversion and change her skin tone to match that of Josephine Baker, who is an African-American woman. Um, but as I was doing the stitching and I got part of the dress done and I got part of the hair done, she morphed somehow into Dorothy Dandridge. <sighs> Dorothy Dandridge, just love her, love her, love her, love her. Um, specifically, she reminded me of Dorothy Dandridge in Carmen, but not as sassy, more regal. So somehow the Josephine Baker, Dorothy Dandridge, they merged into this one cross-stitch pattern, um, who is now known as Josephine Dorothy. I don't know. But anyway, here she is in all of her glory, naked, except for her little shoulder strap, um, which is falling off of her arm and kind of sassy there. So I haven't gotten very far. All of these white spaces you see up here in her hair, those are all going to be beads. Um, but her skin is completely finished and you can see how I've done the skin tone conversion. I hope you can see that. Um, where she looks like, you know, Dorothy Dandridge or Josephine Baker and I just love her. And I, I personally love um, doing African American cross stitch when I, when I find it. I think I talked about this in my stash, but I don't find it very often. Um, but now that I've, I've done this conversion, I think it turned out so well. Um, I might continue to try to do that, but I'll be very happy when, you know, she has her clothes on and I can see her in all her glory. But as we speak right now, um, Josephine Dorothy or Dorothy Josephine is um, at a standstill because I have other pressing issues to take care of and I'm just going to keep on plugging away slowly but surely um, but those are my only two whips going on at the time um, so I don't have anything else to share I actually am out of town I'm on a business trip a week-long business trip in South Carolina um, so those are only two whips that I brought with me because I had every intention of making a video while I was here um, because I thought I just might have a little bit more time um, to do it, to make the videos. And, I, and here it is the night before I leave and I'm just now finding the time. I haven't even had time to stitch. I've been so tired um, after doing these trainings all day. It just, I haven't had time. I just come back to the hotel room and I'm exhausted. I might have done five stitches. <laughs> on Josephine, um, seriously, in the week that I've been here. I think I might have done five, ten stitches tops. My phone is ringing. Isn't that terrible? I'm not going to answer the phone in the middle of a video. How rude. Anyway, that's my update so far. Um, I don't think I have anything else to show you aside from package that I received in the mail and I was very excited to receive this package for a number of reasons number one it came from overseas it came from England and I have not received an overseas package or letter since I had a pen pal in New Zealand in the seventh grade and that was very exciting but anyway that was I didn't need to share that anyway I received my package uh, maybe about two weeks ago. Um, it came to me in 11 days, which is really good for Royal Mail, I'm assuming. I don't know how long it takes. Um, I'm assuming that's good because I'm still waiting on my Millennium Frame that I ordered on January 6th. 
but I know that's going to take a long time, and I'm just being very patient with that. And maybe it'll be there waiting for me when I get home. It'll be a nice surprise. Anyway, I ordered this, and um, I received it in 11 days. It is my Gecko Rouge pattern. I'm so excited about this, and I'm trying desperately not to start stitching on it until I finish something, and I'm hoping that'll be my mirror. Um, but I got turned on to, to Gecko Rouge by Nordling, who has videos um, on Floss Tube, and she was showing off her octopus, and she was saying that they, it was, I hadn't purchased a kit in such a long time, but when I went on the Gecko Rouge website, these are not these are not your Michaels kits, kids. You won't find these in Michaels and Joann's. Um, I'm sitting here fondling the floss as we speak. I'm just rubbing on the floss. Why do I do that? Anyway, um, she showed her kit and how it came packaged, and it, but I was more turned on by the pattern by the pattern itself, the octopus. I just thought it was just badass and I just wanted to see where she got this from so I was looking on the Gecko Rouge website and then I went on to Etsy and I have a love of elephants I love elephants I think they're the most beautiful creatures um, and I found this pattern and it's called the Union and it's sticking to the plastic during my dramatic introduction okay there it is Oh, how beautiful is that? Yes. Gather around and bask in the beauty of this pattern. It's called the Union. I had this stitching panda thing going on where it's showing up backwards. I've never filmed on my iPad before. And I know that um, Carolyn posted something on Stitching Panda's floss to video at the in the comments on how to fix that and I tried it but I can't remember what she said but anyway this is the gecko rouge pattern this is the cover page just shook it so you know it's just the page um, it is going to be 15 by 11.11 .11 inches um, and I believe I'm doing this on 18 count I am and it's the, the pattern was designed by Lynette Shelley Curious Creatures. I'll show it to you again. The little trunks are intertwined and it's got this, you know, this Moroccan tile theme or something going on in the background. I don't know. I don't even know if there's elephants in Morocco, but to me it looks like Moroccan tile. These flowers. I just thought it was beautiful. And that's me and that's my husband. That's how I look at it. I just thought it was beautiful. But anyway. <sighs> Yeah, the dramatic side. I don't know why I did that, yeah. But that is the cover page. And this, I'm looking at this for the first time, by the way. I haven't touched any of this, so I'm showing this to you as if I know what it is, and I have no idea. This is, it says, this chart has been designed and printed with our best intentions of being without mistakes. However, the possibility of human error, printing mistakes, or the variation of individual stitching does exist and we regret that we cannot be responsible for this. So that's the disclaimer from Lynette Shelley. And this is the pattern that of course I can't show you. Um, but on the first page it shows, and I'm doing this sideways because it's just easier. These, This is the color key. Um, and it shows the symbol followed by the block of color. Um, followed by a double digit number that I'm assuming based off of the strands that I'm looking at is a number of strands per color, I'm not sure. But you get it all in a book, so everything stays in one place, which I think is mighty cool. Um, and it has this little binder um, clasp that can I was about to say that can easily come off as I struggle. Yeah, that can easily come off, right? Oh, there you go. So it can come off just like we had, you know, in school when we get our little reports. And then you slide it. So I'm going to make a copy of these. And then you can slide. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Then you can slide the clasp back on and once again have a book. I think that's cool. I thought Lordly said that you get a color pattern and a black and white pattern, but not so much. Maybe that has changed. I don't know. But I thought it came with two patterns, a working pattern and the pattern that you don't want to color or highlight or whatever. But anyway, brace yourselves. <laughs> So brace yourselves for this dramatic introduction and the floss is stuck. Looky there. Look at all the floss. Look at all the floss. Isn't it lovely? I don't know why. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. I think I had a cup of coffee. But anyway, it comes on this cool, these cool color cards. I just found needles. We have needles right there in the upper left hand corner. Little needles there. It feels like it's more than one. Maybe it is just one. It's one little needle wrapped in tissue paper with a gecko rouge sticker. And then we have, and I don't want to untie the bow. Or maybe I should. Two. Three, four, five. We have five color cards here. This is a color card. And you see that there's one, two, three, four, five. It looks like there are 90 colors in all. And it separates them by 18 different colors per card. So when you're looking in your pattern and you look at what color you're going to use or what symbol you're going to use, you refer to the color key in the book and then you can easily reference the color key on the card with the corresponding color. So I think that's pretty cool. But I, I have heard that some people like to keep it on the card. It's very, you know, for aesthetic purposes, I guess, it's very beautiful on the card, but I don't know if I'll do that. I might take it off and bobbinate it or put it in bags. I'm not sure. But anyway, Gecko Rouge only uses DMC floss. So all of this is DMC. Isn't that beautiful? All of this is DMC and um, it's just a party waiting to happen. And then of course we have our fabric. And here is my 18 count Ada. And I haven't touched it until now, um, but what I wanted to see was how stiff it was. Sometimes when you order Ada, it's very stiff. Um, and part of the advantage of that is that you don't need to use a hoop, but I am a hoop slash Q-snap person. And you know, like my fabric taut, um, I can't, I'm not there with stitching in hand yet. Um, so I need fabric that easily goes into a hoop and that's pliable. I like the feel of it. I don't like it to be stiff like cardboard. Um, so I'm happy with the fabric. I'm happy with everything. And again, the union. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love it. And hopefully I'll finish it. You know I have problems with finishing. So anyway, that is my video. Um, I think this might be one of my shorter videos. We're going on 28 minutes here. Um, I do want to show you something else. And this is, you know, I gave Trisha, the left-handed stitcher, a shout out in my last video. I think I gave her a couple of shout outs. But I'm about to give her a shout out again. And I'm going to tell you why. She showed something, and I've seen this done before. I've just never really, I think I tried it once and didn't stick to it. Until she gave this tip. This is stitching in the well. As you can see, my Q-snap is on top of the fabric. My snaps are on top of the fabric rather than, no, I'm saying it wrong. My cue snaps are underneath the fabric rather than on top of them. You know, sometimes we'll put the, we'll lay the fabric over the cue snap and then put the cue snap on top right here and make it taut. Well, what stitching, with stitching in the well, you put the cue snap underneath the fabric. Let me think for a moment. 
if I'm saying this correctly. You put the Q snap, the frame, on top of the on top of the the fabric, and then you put your Q snaps underneath. So you're you're stitching in the well. You see, you're stitching inside the Q snap rather than your fabric laying on top of the Q snap. I hope that made sense. But what this does, I've seen this done before, but I didn't get the appeal of it until she said that it makes it so much easier to. Um, run your needle underneath the threads in the back because sometimes when you get into that corner like if you're over here stitching it's very hard and your and your your fabric is on top of the key snap it's very hard to run your thread your needle under the thread to end it and then pull your thread out it's difficult sometimes if it's on the edge but what i can do with this it doesn't matter if she's on the very edge it doesn't matter um I can easily run my needle under my thread and because it's a flat surface rather than going up into the cue snap the well isn't underneath the design I'm still looking over here because that's what I'm used to looking at um, you can run your needle through and very easily pull it out but she also said which I thought was a great selling point as well that if it were to collect any dust or residue it goes on the back of the fabric rather than catching on the front because this is inverted. This is inside the well. Um, so it sits a little deeper and the surface that comes into contact with more surfaces is the back. She sold me and I tried it and I've been doing it ever since. So thank you, Trisha, for that tip. Greatly appreciate it. Um, and those are all the updates that I have for now. Um, I don't have anything else. So I think that I am going to end here. Um, and hopefully the next time we meet, I'll have an update. I think I want to do some of those tags. I haven't done any tags. None of the no, get to know your needle worker. Stitching Panda came out with a tag. I think Mrs. Baker Girl came out with a tag. And most recently, um, the Coffee Stitcher came out with a tag. And I haven't done any of them. so. I always listen to you guys and I always love getting to know you, you know, but maybe just maybe you want to get to know me too. So maybe the next time I'll do some little, I'll give you a little tag action there. But anyway, that's all I have. Um, always a pleasure. Look forward to watching your videos and learning from you as I do every time I watch one of your videos. Maybe, just maybe next time I'll have a millennium frame to show you. I don't know. But until then, Thanks for watching and happy stitching and I'll see you next time. Bye.